friends, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So if you've been around here a while, you will know that I talk a lot on this channel about historical fiction. It's one of my favourite genres um, and I've done a lot of videos about it. In fact, I will leave a playlist linked in the cards above of all of the videos that I've ever made about historical fiction. So if you want to check out more of them after you've watched this video, there will be that playlist there for you. You may also know that at the moment, every other month, I pick a region out of my jar, my region's jar, and I read a selection of books from that region. So far I have read books from Southern Africa and books by Aboriginal, Maori and Torres Strait Islander authors. I will again leave the link to that playlist in the cards above, even more videos for you to check out. So I thought, as I love historical fiction and I love reading books from around the world, it would be a great idea for me to put together a video of recommendations of books from different countries in the world that are in my favourite genre. So whilst I was thinking about this video, I thought I would throw in books that I have read and can give solid recommendations of, as well as books that I am excited about and are on my TBR but I have yet to read. I wanted to make sure I covered as much of the world as possible and it was easier if I did that, but that does mean that I have 30 books to talk to you about today. Normally when I make one of these recommendations I only have 10 books to talk about at a time um, so I can probably go in depth and give them a review but since I have 30 books this time it will hopefully be a little shorter and sharper and hopefully I will entice you with a little taste of what the books will be about and if you love historical fiction and reading around the world as I do there will be many books for you to add to your TBR. So without further ado, let's get into those books. I've also tried to ensure that the books that I am talking about are by authors from the country where the book is set or who have ancestry from that country and are talking about family history. This is just how I prefer to do my reading. I've read loads of great books by people not from a country talking about a country, but for this video I chose to focus on people who are from that country. <laughs> I'm going to start with Europe because that's the continent I'm in right now and of course I'm going to start with England because that is the country I am in right now. It might not be a far travel for you but not everyone who watches my channel is from England and of course the best of English historical fiction is The Wolf Hall Trilogy by Hilary Mantel. This is something that I've talked about a lot on my channel and I have a review of the whole trilogy if you want to go and hear more about it but this is a story about Thomas Cromwell, an in-depth look at the intrigues of the Tudor court from the mind of Henry the Eighth's fixer. It is a deep, engrossing, incredibly beautifully described psychological depiction of a Tudor man and one of the most gripping pieces of historical fiction at the same time. Now if we go north of here and head into Scotland, the book I would recommend is The Game of Kings by Dorothy Dunnett. Another book that I've recommended a lot on my channel, this is a swashbuckling adventure set in a 16th century Scotland when Mary Queen of Scots is just a baby. We have a poetry quoting, sword waving, romantic hero in Lymond and a mystery pulling us through. Is Lymond really a good man or not? Next over to Ireland and I would recommend The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. This is rather on the nose for now as it's set in 1918 during the flu epidemic in Dublin on a maternity ward for women who are about to give birth and have contracted the flu. Over the course of three days we follow Nurse Powers and her relationships with other medical staff and with the skivvy birdie who has never worked in a hospital before. We see the trials and tribulations of this flu the, and the perilous situation of women and women's health in Ireland in the early 20th century. Now into mainland Europe and a book from Germany and this is Till by Daniel Kalman which was translated by Ross Benjamin. This is about Till who is a trickster character from German folklore but has in this book been transplanted to the Thirty Years War in the 17th century. This book follows Till's life in a non-linear fashion through witch hunts and besieged castles and into the court of the Winter King, a king who was crowned for only three months and is still touring his desultory court across the continent in turmoil. With beautifully dark poetic language and an expo exploration of superstition and folklore and a Europe tearing itself, this book is wonderfully visceral and also very funny. Next one now and into Poland and much more recent history we have Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jarodowski which is set during the final years of the Soviet occupation of Poland. We follow two boys who meet at a summer camp and read Giovanni's room together before going off camping and falling in love. When they return to Warsaw one joins the party and one becomes a political rebel and we see how their relationship and their lives are, are shaped by the political conditions in which they move. 
slow moving and psychologically focused novel this is beautiful heart-rending and a clear-eyed look at the soviet occupation of poland speaking of soviets the next book i want to talk about is one that i am currently reading but have not yet finished and that is that is dr zhivago by boris pasternak this is a Russian classic, as well as being a piece of historical fiction, published as it was during the 1950s, but set between 1903 and the Second World War, in a Russia undergoing the tumult of the 1905 revolution, the 1917 revolution, the First World War, and on into the Second World War. Famously a beautiful love story and a picture of a people living through some of the most difficult conditions. This classic has been touted as a must read for everybody, although one that's hard to follow with all of those Russian names and nicknames. <laughs> and finally, the final Soviet book that I'd like to read is, is The Eighth Life for Brilka by Nino Haratishvili. Sorry if I've butchered that Georgian pronunciation, but this is a book set in Georgia during the Soviet occupation. This is set in Georgia at the beginning of the 20th century and follows romances and chocolate through the through the history of Russia, following generation after generation of compelling family stories of love and loss. This is one that has been said to have great characters and beautiful writing. The only thing that has stopped me reading it so far is that it is very, very chunky, but it sounds like a perfect winter read. Now we are moving on to Asia. A book that has been incredibly popular and that is set between South Korea and Japan is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This is again a family epic that follows the 20th century in South Korea and Japanese relations, beginning with a girl who is seduced by a Japanese man in a South Korean village and ends up moving to South Korea along with a missionary. The tale of their children and their children's children unfolds as we discover the treatment of Korean people in Japan across the 20th century. The poverty, the abuse and the pachinko halls. If you love a family epic, I think this one might be for you, although it is not one where you can get close to many of the characters because things move on very fast. Next, Singapore and How We Disappeared by Jing Jing Lee. I don't usually read Second World War fiction, but I like it more when it is told from a different perspective. And this one is told during the Japanese invasion and occupation of Malaysia during the Second World War. It is about the comfort women. The book is split between two different time periods and we see a older woman and a young boy coming together to, re to connect over history in the 21st century. And also a beautiful and moving portrayal of one Singapore woman's experience of comfort of being a comfort woman for the Japanese and the hope and friendship and solidarity she found with the other women there. Now I have not read much Asian historical fiction but there are many on my TBR including Against the Loveless World by Susan Abulhawa which is set in Palestine about Nar who has been confined to a small cell and although journalists visit her she refuses to tell her story. It is about her love story with a dark-eyed man named Bilal and their fight for freedom in Palestine in the 1970s and the tension between de desire and survival. Moving across to the other side of Asia is The Revolution According to Raimondo Mata by Gina Apostol, which is set in the Philippines. This is the form of a pseudo-biography of the half-blind bookworm revolutionary Raimondo Mata, tracing his life and education in Manila, his, lo his love affairs and his discovery of the fellow revolutionary Jose Rizal. But this 19th century historical fiction is complicated by forwards and afterwards. I love books that play with form in that way and that question the validity of our narrator. Something I also love in my historical fiction is a touch of magical realism, which I know is true of The Night Tiger by Yang Tzu Chu, which is set in 1930s colonial Malaysia, about young Ren who has a mission to reunite his master with his finger. He has 49 days or else his master's soul will roam the world forever. In the quest to keep his promise, he discovers secrets and he, he discovers secrets and rumours and tigers. Now moving into Africa. One of the books I read when I was reading books from Southern, Southern Africa was Nervous Conditions by Tsitsi Dangaramga. This is a mix of historical fiction and autofiction because it is based on Tsitsi Dangaramga's life, but it is set in the 1960s when Zimbabwe was Rhodesia. We follow a young girl and her journey to get an education. We learn from the beginning she's not allowed one until her brother dies. This is a close study of one girl, of the complications and hypocrisies of living in a colonial in colonial Rhodesia, of cultural colonialism and a beautiful coming-of-age story. I also read The Old Drift by Namwali Sopel, which is set in Zambia, and an epic that follows three families across a hundred years of Zambian history and across into our future. There's much humour and conversation between our flawed, warm, wonderful, rounded characters to discuss ideas of colonialism and techno-futurism. It's a book that bears rereading as there is so much 
as there is so much packed into it, but written with such lightness and deftness that you hardly notice. Set in the Republic of the Congo, we have The Death of Comrade President by Alain Mabako, Mabanko, which is set over three days during a 1970s coup which overthrew the government of the Congo, but told from the perspective of an 11-year-old boy, with satirical humour and an innocence that allows us to see much more than he understands. But while there is lightness in this book, the threat of violence also hangs over everything and alongside the strictures of the regi regime, and the final and the final he episode hits you with a punch in the gut. Set in Mali, we have Segu by Maurice Condé, which actually tells the story of the Bambara people, whose kingdom's capital is Segu. We follow four sons of a prominent man of the Bambara at the turn of the 18th century and into the 19th century, who experience the full range of West African history in that time period, from Bambara traditions to kidnapping and enslavement to Islamic conversion and success as a warrior before eventual conversion to Christianity. Told with a folkloric style and a grisly attention to detail, this world really feels alive as we explore all corners of it. Another classic, we have Things Fall Apart but you knew at Achebe, which is set in Nigeria, or more specifically in Ibo land. This is about the Ibo people and one man specifically, whose pride causes him to betray his people's traditions and end up exiled from his people. When contact with the European comes, all ends in disaster. A tiny slip of a book that manages to pack so much into every word. Set in Ethiopia, The Shadow King by Marza Mengiste was one of my favourite books last year. It, for, it is about the Italian invasion of Ethiopia during the 1930s and the guerrilla warfare that happened afterwards, full of incredibly beautiful description and ringed about by ideas of, ringed about by epigraphs from the Iliad and a Greek chorus that bring an epic nature to the women of, to the women of this East African warfare. We follow ideas of colonialism, of who is really to blame and what innocence really means as well as who it is history remembers and who gets to record history. There is so much great historical fiction coming from African writers and so many more that I need to read. One of which, of course, is Homegoing by Yajasi, which is a set in Ghana and the United States. It's about two half-sisters, one of whom marries a man making his money off slave trading and one of whom becomes enslaved and ends up in America. We follow the two divergent branches of the family tree as their his as history goes on. This is one that I've heard so much great things about, so I definitely need to get to soon. One I have also is At Night All Blood Is Black by David Diop, another very slim book and one that was shortlisted for the 2021. I think this won the 2021 International Man Booker, potentially. It's definitely been shortlisted. About two Senegalese soldiers who fought for France during the First World War until one dies in a, in a shell hole with his belly torn open and the other who is completely torn apart by this and devotes himself to war. It is apparently an unrelenting take on war, race, masculinity and colonialism. Again, it seems it will pack a lot into a short book. Another one I've been meaning to read is She Would Be King by Waetu Moore, which is set in Liberia and is about the founding of Liberia and again, another touch of magical realism. A colony of formerly enslaved African Americans have come back to Africa to start their own, to start their own country and follows three different people, one who has never left West Africa, one who was enslaved in Virginia, and one who is the mixed-race son of a slave owner and a maroon rebel in Jamaica, who, who discover that they are all cursed, or perhaps uniquely gifted. And winner of the Jalak Prize is The First Woman by Jennifer Makumbi, which is set in Uganda, and follows, and follows the coming-of-age story of Karabo, a headstrong and independent young woman, trying to find her place as her country is transformed by the dictatorship of Idi Amin. Moving now to Australasia, or Oceania. I'm never sure what you're supposed to call that continent. This is the one I have the shortest list for, so if you have any recommendations for historical fiction from Australia, New Zealand, or any Pacific Island nations, I would love to hear from you. One that I can recommend from Australia is The Secret River by Kate Grenville, which begins in England and tells the story of a young man who, through poverty, ends up committing a crime and being transported to Australia. With lush, dark, lyrical prose, Grenville tells us of the interactions of the colon colonisers of these poor colonizers with the indigenous people and the violence that they committed, the way that frenzies are whipped up and prejudice becomes violence. And from New Zealand, I also love The Luminaries by Ella Catton, an epic novel based on the Zodiac, which tells a story in Gold Rush Hokitika, 12 men who are wrapped up in a mystery of how a man disappeared, a, 
uh, a sex worker turned up passed out and with a dress full of gold and what happened with all with everything that washed up after a shipwreck also from australia is one of my mum's favorite reads oscar and lucinda by peter carey which i believe won the booker prize in the 80s and is about the undeclared love between an heiress and a clergyman Two compulsive gamblers aboard a ship from England to Australia in the 19th century. A narrative tale of love, religion, gambling, commerce and colonialism ends in a nightmare expedition to transport a glass church across Australia. And finally, the co and finally we have the Americas to discuss. From Haiti, I would recommend The Salt Roads by Nalo Hopkinson, based on Haitian voodoo religion. We follow a goddess as she flits between the minds of three different women, although our major character is in Haiti during the time of the slave rebellions. She also explores a woman in France in the 19th century and a slaved, enslaved woman in Egypt in the 4th century BC. Exploring ideas of gender, race and slavery and told with warmth and lightness despite also including a lot of brutality that can be difficult to read but is rendered so well. This book is another epic that combines disparate storylines to great effect. From the US I'm going to recommend two books here and the first one is The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. A tale of two young enslaved boys in, this, in the American Deep South who are in love and the consequences of that. This book hops around through multiple different perspectives. I don't think it ever repeats one. Managing to create such depth of character and such incredibly beautifully lyrical prose. Another experimental book from the US is the is Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders, another book of prize winner that I love. This story is about the son of Lincoln who died um, during a party and this is told from, and we have two different sections of the, this book, although they are interspersed together. One which is told from multiple historical sources, some real, some not, about the night of the party and the other is in the Bardo, told again from multiple different perspectives. The Bardo is a limbo state in Tibetan Buddhism. We explore again ideas of colonialism, American history, what makes an American, as well as death, loss and grief um, and the idea of what is a great man. It is definitely an acquired taste but so incredibly beautifully written. The final Booker Prize winner on this list is from Jamaica and that is A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James, although definitely more than seven people are murdered in this book. This is about the attempted assassination of Bob Marley in the 1970s, the gang culture and the infiltration of the CIA to prevent leftist politics in Jamaica and continued integration of CIA, the CIA into drug trading into Florida and New York during the 1980s and 90s as well. It is about cycles of abuse and cycles of poverty and cycles of criminality. It is a book that keeps coming back round on itself, which I think makes sense of why a record is on the cover. Told in a Jamaican patois, it can take a little getting used to if that is not a dialect you are used to, but once you are immersed, it really builds the atmosphere. And the final book is one that I haven't read, but one I definitely want to, and that is Hades Argentina by David Leodel. Based on Leodel's own family history, it is about a man who in 1976 was a medical student in Buenos Aires, drawn to his childhood love Isabel, who is drawn even deeper into an insurgency against the dictatorship in Argentina at the time. He returns a decade later an odyssey into a past, a catabasis, if you will, raising profound questions about the gap between who we were supposed to be and who we actually became. Whew, okay, there you have 30 books from around the world that are pieces of historical fiction. Some I have read and loved, some I am dying to read. And I'm always looking to expand this list, so if you have any books that you know from across the world that are historical fiction, please do let me know in the comments down below. Also let me know if there are any of those that sound particularly good to you. I would love to hear what you are reading. If you did enjoy this video, I will put a video here that I think you will really enjoy. And I will also put a button here to subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. And remember to give this video a thumbs up if you, and remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I put out new videos every Thursday and Sunday. So I will see you again soon for another video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.